This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we're talking production audio, my baby boo. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques. Going to some of your favorites. I'm your host, Hollywood Josh films. Conley. Josh is not your host, but I am, I Brian Conley. Am. But before we get into it, it seems like a lot of people still have not heard that we're doing a December sale and that it's going on right now. Yes, we have a big sale currently going on. The Lord of War pack, which is usually $300, is $180 right now, and so on. Everything that is digital delivery stuffs that is not a new release is a delicious 40% off. No promo code needed. How you like them apples? We're not eating apples. But no, it's an expression like how you, how you like that? <laughs> how you feel about that? It's a weird expression. How you feel about that? Perverted. Well, continuing our talks about proximity because we just made proximity, so we're doing episodes showing us making proximity because of proximity. Proximity. Okay. Just one more. No. Okay. Well, we have been saying if you have not seen our latest short, go here because well, to spoilers, lots of spoilers and stuff. So if you have not then do, and then this. Mics and stuff. One of the things that I was most worried about going into this was the audio. We didn't have the time or crew to do dual system sound, so I needed to pipe the audio into the same device that we were recording our video on, which was the Key Pro Mini that I had on loan thanks to my friend Mike Sutton. And I had only used once before for some tests and I never used with audio at all. So I did a few quick tests before I went out and then I just had to go for it, hoping that we wouldn't have to end up doing ADR since I hate ADR nine times out of 10, it sounds terrible, unless you have someone amazing at the process. And I mean, we can all think of Hollywood films where you can completely tell that it's ADR and it is totally distracting. But lucky enough, our production sound was actually pretty great, largely thanks to the mics we used, which of course was a shotgun mic. This guy right here, this is the Rode NTG3 shotgun mic. It's a mic priced in the mid range, but it performs like a high priced one. For years, I have been using the Audio-Technica AT897, which is a low budget shotgun mic and you could definitely get some decent audio out of but it takes a lot more control and effort which are two things that I did not have the luxury on while shooting proximity there were two mics that I had with me on location a shorter shotgun mic and a longer shotgun mic this shorter shotgun mic is the Rode NTG3 and the longer is the Rode NTG8 the difference between the two is the pickup angles which is how focused the mic is so the NTG3 as a shorter shotgun would have a much wider area of pickup while the longer NTG8 would have a much more narrow for instance. So right now I'm recording to my Rode NTG3 shorter shotgun mic and you can hear that we have some music playing to the side which is why a shotgun mic like this is important because it's canceling out that music. If we bring up the room microphone you can hear how loud that music actually is but if we bring it back down it's much more focused on my voice since the shotgun mic really is just focusing in on what you pointed at. But now if we switch from my shorter shotgun mic over to the NTG8, the longer shotgun mic, you can see it cancels the music out even more since it's a much more focused pattern. So it's just focusing in on what you pointed out even more so than the shorter. If your actor is staying in one spot and you need to reduce the amount of noise in the room, say if there's an air conditioner or refrigerator that is loud and you can't shut it off, a long shotgun is great. But if the actor is moving around, then you wanna go with a shorter shotgun mic since it's a lot harder to follow the actor with the longer. You really need to nail the direction of the mic on the actor, whereas with the shorter, you have a lot more wiggle room, for instance. So again, I'm recording on the NTG3, which is that shorter shotgun mic in that wider pattern than the longer. So as I start moving to the side and getting off angle of the mic, Microphone, it still stays solid for a pretty good distance. But if I switch over to the NTG8, since it's much more narrow focus, as I start moving off angle to this one, it starts getting muddy a lot quicker than the other one. So you really have to nail the precision of what you're trying to capture. So both are useful in their own way, but if you can only get one shotgun mic, I would go for the short to mid-length shotgun mic, much more universal than the longer shotgun mics. Those are a little more specialized. Of course, you also have lav mics, but unless I have a pro on set with me, I rarely use them. It can be tough to position them to get the proper sound, especially on something like this with actors moving around a lot. You easily get a lot of this.
There are tricks to get rid of that clothes rustling sound, but it adds some workflow time that we just didn't have on the shoot. So now that we have the mic that we're gonna be using, the shorter or mid-size shotgun mic, we need all the goodies to put around this bad boy, starting with the boom pole. And just like my other audio gear, this is from Rode Mics. This one has several risers, as most do, and a soft handle area, which is great while booming. And if you don't have the cash to buy a boom pole, check out this episode right here to see our DIY boom pole and shock mount build for $25. Next is wind protection, which is an absolute must when you're shooting outside. A windscreen like this is good for indoor shooting. It'll block any wind you pick up by moving around or maybe something small from an air conditioner perhaps, but it's not gonna be enough when you're shooting outside in any kind of real wind. For that, you want a blimp like this bad boy. Unscrew the back, pull this out, mount your mic, replace and screw back down. This is also connected with a pistol grip, which beneath has an XLR connection. This is great for getting sounds for sound design later on, like footsteps and such. But here is the difference. Here is the bear mic getting wind blown on it. Then with the windscreen. And now the blimp. That one doesn't really look like anything. If you want more protection, you can slip on the dead wombat or the dead cat over the blimp. I didn't need it on this shoot since there was very little wind. But now we have our gear. We are tethered straight to the same system that we're recording our image to and we're ready to go. So what about the actual process of booming or boomery as the more sophisticated might say. First of all, the technique in which you hold the boom is not at all important for me. There are just three main things that you need to keep in mind and they all have to do with placement. First, make sure that the mic points directly at what you intend to capture. If it is an actor, you wanna be above, slightly in front while getting as close as possible. Second, know your frame line. Ask the cam op, what's my frame? He will let you know when the mic dips into that shot and you wanna stay a few inches above that. And the third thing is boom shadow. Keep an eye on where the boom shadow is so it doesn't end up in the frame or worse, on the actor. Now, if neither two or three are possible while booming above, you can also boom from below like so. It will change the way that your sound sounds a bit and you have to keep in mind what you're gonna be picking up from above the actor. So in this situation, you would pick up birds and bugs in the trees and the leaves rustling about. So just keep those things in mind. Outside of that, you just hold it like a boss, like my boy Wayne, the battle ax holder Phillips. That's what's up. So if you're trying to get yourself known on the interwebs, if you're trying to cram your being into in, into the just the mainframe of of the interwebs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you can jam yourself into the social consciousness of the planet digitally. You're literally a computer. Yes. You need a domain name and you need web hosting. You can get both from domain.com so you can cram yourself digitally into people's craniums. It yeah, in, you can use the domain discovery service to help you pick the name that's right for you. You can use their hosting plans, which are affordable and are reliable. We can make it more affordable by using the coupon code FilmRide to get yourself 15% off and you your get domain name and web hosting. You do not get a free you monkey. Get a free pet you do monkey. not get a, You do not. I have one. That is false advertisement, I, and I we're going to get in trouble. A pet we're responsible for the I things you a say. Pet monkey. You did not receive a pet. I monkey. have it. You don't. It's in my room. You're lying. It's true. Use coupon code FILMRIGHT for 15% off your domain name and web hosting. When you think and domain names, think domain.com. Nope, no pet monkeys. You get a monkey. There's no monkey. I have one. No, I do not. No. Domain.com does not endorse that statement. Free monkeys. <sighs> Logo. So that is it for today. We are also going to get into post sound pretty soon, but one step at a time, I say. In the meantime, if you have any production audio questions, you can shoot them to me on Twitter right here. And don't forget about our digital store right here, which has the digital download of Proximity with over an hour of special features, which you won't find anywhere else. And again, our December sale. So yeah, savings and such. But okay, I'll see you peoples next time when I skydive with a convertible. I'm gonna film right at the show that takes me. I got distracted by a thing. What are you doing down there? <laughs>
<laughs>